Hi there. Thank you for joining us for season two of The Current. I'm your host, Jack Kessler. We've got a great show for you today. We'll be sitting down for an interview with Samantha Cleary, a representative of the service dog organization, Paws for People. We'll be going over local events in Wilmington that you can attend in Recurrent, and we'll be looking at how you can make the most of your pseudo spring break. Let's throw it to Ben for more. I'm Ben Bradshaw, and welcome to Recurrent. On March 5th, Wilmington film organization Kuka Loris will be showing the film Groundhog Day here on campus. Attendees will have to pay a small fee to attend the screening at Keenan Hall. Those interested can look up the future screening schedule online. In other news, warm weather has returned to Wilmington, giving students and tourists alike a great opportunity to enjoy the city's most defining aspect, the beach. Finally, Wilmington's Cameron Art Museum has a number of exhibits opening this month. For more information, check out CameronArtMuseum.org. Now, let's get back to Jack with this week's interview. And welcome back. For this week's interview, we're sitting down with Samantha Cleary, the Director of Advancement and Engagement for Pause for People. Sam, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very much for having me. All right, and I see you've also brought another guest with you today. Yes, I did. I have my assistance ambassador dog, Rosie, um, with me today. She comes with me throughout the Wilmington community and showcases what Pause for People assistance dogs can do for our clients. And what can they do for your yes, clients? Yes, so we place assistance dogs with children, civilians, veterans, military dependents, and active duty military. Those are our primary categories. Um, and we can train our assistance dogs to really do anything for any type of disability. Um, so we will play psychiatric assistance dogs, mobility assistance dogs. We also have some scent detection dogs, which include dogs that can sense out low blood sugar levels for diabetes, as well as scent detection for maybe some peanut allergies or other types of allergies. That's just a small group of types of dogs that we train. All right, so can you tell us a little bit about Rosie? Yes, yeah, so um, Rosie is my uh, assistance ambassador dog, as I said before. Um, she travels with me everywhere. I am very blessed and lucky to say that I've known Ro Rosie since she was born. Um, I've been with the organization that also marks for five years. Um, so I assisted in the training of Rosie when she was a little puppy. Um, and then when she was an older dog, um, started training her and she ended up staying with me to be my ambassador dog. Excellent, and what does she train for? Um, so she is an ambassador dog, so she isn't trained for anything specific since I myself do not have any type of disability that I need an assistance dog for. So our staff members all have their own ambassador dogs to just showcase to the community this is what we can train our dogs to do. So Rosie is really great at picking up dropped items. Um, her favorite thing to do is press the handicap buttons outside of doors. Um, so I do use that as a fun like little educational tool for people that need to learn more, want to learn more about what our dogs can do. So those are the two things that she'll show case for people when she's feeling like it. <laughs> That's a very effective marketing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, could you go into a general history of Paws for People? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Paws for People was founded in 1999 um, by our founder and executive director, Curie Henry Winston Hunt. She was just 12 years old at the time when she founded the organization yeah. with her father, Terry. Um, they were originally in Northern Virginia. That's where they started our programs. And we re-headquartered to Wilmington in 2011 to start the UNCW Assistance Dog Training Program, which is our partnership program with the College of Health and Human Services. How has that partnership flourished? How has it gone so far? It has actually been so amazing. Um, we have now, it's been 10 years now that we've had the program, um, now in 2021, and we finally introduced um, a minor program. So undergraduate students here at UNCW have the opportunity to get a certificate in assistance, assistance dog training with Paws for People, or they can get a minor in assistance dog training with the partnership program with Paws for People. So that's a really unique um, program that's not offered at many undergraduate universities, and we're really happy that UNCW has been so welcoming to us for these past 10 years and willing to build the program even more. Hmm. Uh, what would students have to do to obtain that minor? Yeah, so there are, right now, there are four courses for the certificate program. Um, so we just call them class one, two, three, or four. For the minor, we've added in a fifth class. So there's five classes needed for that, plus whatever electives are required for it. Um, so you just go ahead down to the registrar's office. That's the best way to see what's open. Um, and if you can get in, I will say class one, which is our very first class, um, tends to fill up very quickly. Um, you do need to be sophomore standing. Um, and it does count as a university uh, credit for your like electives that you have to get done. So we tend to see a lot of sophomores in that course to just get that elective credit that they need, but then they really love what the program is and they stick through it with all four classes and now they have that opportunity to take that fifth class and turn it into a minor. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. 
Uh, now, can you tell us a bit about your personal connection with uh, Pause for People? Yes, yeah, so I am an alumni of UNCW. I graduated in 2015 um, from the psychology program, and I learned about the assistance dog training program during my time here. So I did take the courses. Um, I loved it. This was pre-minor program, so I do have my certificate. Wish I could have taken the minor, but it wasn't here yet. Um, so I have my certificate in assistance dog training. I volunteered just a bunch more with the organization after finishing my certificate with our puppies and our puppy development center. Um, and I just kind of stayed in Wilmington since. I reached out to Curie and Terry on a whim and said, if you need help with anything else, please let me know. And I'm, I'm more than happy to help. I'm coming back to Wilmington. And I was just right place, right time for everybody. And they offered me a position full time with Paws for People. So I've been full time with them since 2016. That's fantastic. <laughs> and as Director of Advancement Engagement, what do you have to do for the organization? Right now that for that title, it's more marketing and PR is really what I focus on. So really showcasing what the organization is about, why it's so important, spread assistance dog awareness, why we are here in Wilmington, showcasing to the Wilmington community, and then also nationwide, you know, what we do, um, how we do it, and the importance of assistance dogs, um, and the difference between type of assistance dogs. So that's my main goal right now, is just continuing to spread the word and educate the general public about what we do and what other assistance dog organizations do as well. Are there any details that you think the general public needs to know about service dogs that they don't? Um, I think a common thing, which honestly I did not know and my parents didn't know when I first started uh, taking the courses, is that people shouldn't just run up and pet an assistance dog. Um, not because they're you know vicious or anything like that, but they're working. They're there for their client for a reason. Um, and in that moment that maybe you're not meaning to you know, do anything wrong, you could distract the dog from doing its job for that person. So the best way, um, my favorite thing just to educate people on is always ask to pet an assistance dog. Try not to make cute little noises at it or like distract them from their client because they're doing a really important job that can mean life or death for some of our clients. Life or death, that's some serious issues right Yes, there. we have some clients that have some more um, medical issues. Um, and if they're, we train the dogs to pay attention to what might be going on. So we have some clients, for example, that have ir irregular heart rhythms. So the dogs can alert to when their heart rhythm gets too high. Um, so in the moment, let's just say that dog is distracted um, and their client has an irregular heart rhythm, you don't know what could potentially happen if the dog didn't pick up on it. Cause sometimes it's hard to pick up on that on your own if your medical equipment fails. So our dog also helps with that. Um, instead of like the, ugh. if you're, if a medical, a piece of medical equipment were to fail, like an Apple watch, which we have some clients wear to let them know what their heart rate is like, or what their irregular heartbeat is like, sometimes it might not work, but our dogs are trained to pick up on that. And we work and we customize those dogs one-on-one -on -one with the client to ensure that they are ready to do their job when they go home. Now, how does the dog know when a person has an irregular heartbeat? Yeah, so the dog that I'm specifically talking about was specifically trained for that one client that does have an irregular heart rhythm. So when they started their training process together, um, we had them together all the time. So the dog could just pick up and learn, this is my new person. This is the scent he's given off. This is what I can feel from him. Um, and sometimes we do purposely do things to, you know, make the dog pick up on something that's going on. So we had made him raise his heart rate level so that the dog could um, sense out the changes when it happened. So he could sense like, okay, his heart rate's up higher now, now it's lower. And it's something internally that is really like more of a scent thing. They can pick up on your cortisol levels. Um, for our scent dogs that are specifically trained for people that have diabetes, we train them to pick up on those low blood sugar levels. And sometimes same thing, medical equipment can fail, but we've seen that our dogs are always on top of it after rigorous training, of course, with our trainers and with our clients. That is absolutely amazing. You must be so proud. Yes, it's a really um, unique program, especially our scent dog program with the dogs that specifically do diabetes alert. Um, I have not had the chance to actually do any of that training, but I have a lot of coworkers and girls that I do work with that focus on that type of training and is absolutely amazing seeing what they can do and teach the dogs um, and how they're gonna help their clients in the future. Mm. Now, earlier you spoke of how each dog is essentially a custom order. Mm -hmm. And you spoke obviously about how you had the dog uh, that could sense you know, heart issues mm -hmm. working with its clients since it was a young puppy. Is that the usual? So we don't train our dog, so we do train our dogs as puppies, but they don't meet their future clients until they're about a year old. So our dogs go through um, the same training process all the way through until they are matched with their clients. Once they're matched with their clients and we talk to the clients on what exactly they will need and what we think the dog can do for them and you know, benefit them um, you know, and overall 
better quality of life, then that's when we start doing our customizable training. So we do have some dogs that early on show a scent dog track. So we're gonna start training them on scent. Um, we can see early on what dogs are more comfortable, let's say around a wheelchair. Rosie, I can tell you, is not very comfortable around a wheelchair, so we would have never placed her with someone that has to utilize a wheelchair on a daily basis because it wouldn't have been fair to our client or to the dog. Um, so we really see what the dog's niche is, and then we do that custom training from there. Um, so that way it's more um, individualized for each client because we have some clients that might have the same disabilities, but in the end of the day, their symptom set might be different uh, for each one. So we want to make sure that we're really helping them and the dog is doing what they want them to do for them. That's very impressive. That's really quite a holistic <laughs> approach, isn't it? All right. Um, have you worked with the white has well has paused for people worked with the wider Wilmington community? Yeah, so we um, work a lot here since we are headquartered here in Wilmington and then with our partnership program at UNCW. A lot of our public access training, so the hours that our dogs have to get out in public before they can become a fully certified assistance dog, we go to so many different places. Um, you know, when schools were open, we were able to go into various schools in the district um, to bring the dogs into various classrooms work with the students there with read programs or just you know an educational program on what assistance dogs do as well as we go to nursing homes we go to libraries we go to target we go to walmart um, lowe's home depot um, anywhere the general public can go we can bring our dogs in so that's what we utilize for training so we are i think pretty well known in the community now because we're out and about all the time with our puppies and with our older dogs that are in training from the UNCW um, program. Um, so yeah, I think that we've made a pretty big impact on Wilmington. Um, we do have some clients here in the w greater Wilmington area. Um, so they're right here in the community as well. And then we do place dogs nationwide. So we have dogs all across the United States. That's so amazing. <laughs> all right, and I guess our last question. Uh, how can people find out more about you? Yeah, so um, if anyone's interested in learning more, um, one about the classes, it's the UNCW Assistance Dog Training Program. That is open to any UNCW undergraduate student. Um, you would have to just look it up on the UNCW Registrar's website. Um, that's the first step for anyone that want, is potentially interested in that. Um, if people are just interested in volunteering with our organization, you can visit pawsforpeople.org. Um, and we do have a volunteer application, so for anyone that might be interested, in volunteering with our puppies or volunteering out at our facility with cleanup days. There's so many different ways that students and the general uh, Wilmington community can get involved and we love to have them. So pawsforpeople.org and then follow us on social media at pause for people and that's what the number four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Samantha, thank you for coming on with yes. us today. Thank you so much for having us. All right, in other news, student reaction to the news that we've lost this year's spring break has been altogether poor. However, there are still ways you can make the most out of what would have been your rockin' spring break. We go to Thaddeus for more. Hi, I'm Thaddeus Friedlein, and here's no spring break, no worries. Here's our list of alternatives for our missing spring break. First, you could rent a cabin in the middle of the woods. With most of our classes online anyway, you'll be able to spend your week in peaceful seclusion. Even though COVID canceled our spring break, it did not cancel the beautiful spring weather. Go to the beach. We literally live on the beach. And again, with the majority of our classes being online, there's plenty of chances to kick it back in the sand with your laptop. Or you can go to a nature preserve. There's one on campus. Take a breath of fresh air. You can learn how to surf or go to the skate park, or you can go ice skating. Who cares if you fall? Your girl will love you for it. Catch up on your studies though. We know you need it. But remember, whatever you do, be safe. Wear your mask and socially distance. Thank you for joining us. I'm Thaddeus Friedline, and we will see you next time here on The Current.